But let's talk about football. NFL came back this week. Um, we had a very good weekend of football. Um, we started off the games with uh, Chiefs versus Texans on Thursday night. The champions got to host the Texans. Uh, they they were one of the few teams that were able to have uh, fans on their stadium. Um, let me just say that having no fans in an NFL stadium looks really weird. It looks more weird than having no fans in, in the NBA arenas. Just because NBA arenas are kind of like smaller so, like, you're able to hide it better, I guess, on the camera angles. In the, in the football angles, like, if, if the camera was on the on the actual action, everything looked fine. Then as soon as they showed, like, the the field goal, like, the goal post angle or, like, an overhead angle or, like, a really low angle going towards the stands, it looked weird. It looked super weird. It looked it kind of looked, made me feel uncomfortable. Like, what? They're just <laughs> the big-ass stadium. Like stadiums that hold eighty thousand people, seventy thousand people, and the only people that are there are the twenty-two players on the field and the rest of the rosters on the side, and it just made me feel like, a, like, I wonder what the players feel. I don't think players are used to ever being in an empty arena. Like in practice, they're in their practice fields with like not a bunch of seats around them. I don't know. It just it felt a little weird. It felt strange. It definitely felt more strange than a. Uh, than the basketball arenas not being uh, full. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. Is it just me or did the NFL uh, stadiums being empty look more weird than uh, than the NBA arenas being empty? Let me know. Let me know. Uh, comment down below if you agree with me or if you don't. For me, for me at least, it, it was it was more shocking seeing the NFL arena. I mean, the stadiums with no fans, but. I quickly wanted to just uh, mention my uh, my picks my picks for the season. I was supposed to uh, I was supposed to make a video before the season started, just so people would know that uh, I'm not making these picks as I go, and that these are my preseason picks. And I'm doing this video after week one, so it may look like uh, it may look like these are biased or like they're I have one week of data to make these picks but i assure you that is not the case i did tweet them out right before right before the chiefs and texan game i did make sure to get all of my picks for the division winners super bowl prediction who's going to make the the wild cards who's going to be in the mix I, I did make sure to tweet that out just so that in case they come true i, I have bragging rights that i did pick them before the season start and no one could say I didn't, even though this video is going to come out after week one. But I'm going to post screenshots of my tweets if I figure out how to do that. Um, probably put it right here or here, maybe, next to Kobe. Or maybe here. Uh, I don't know where I'll put them, but the tweet will be somewhere in this vicinity. And if you're on the podcast, uh, just take my word for it. <laughs> I'll say my predictions right now, and if uh, you want to reference it, I will put uh, my Twitter handle on the description if you want to uh, scroll down. I think actually I, I I made all of my predictions on like one thread, so I'll just put the top one. I'll put the link to the top one on the description for the podcast episode in case you want to fact check me or make sure that I did tweet it out before the, the season started, but... Let me just quickly run through my predictions. Um, you guys may agree or disagree. Uh, comment down below or just, you know, <laughs> speak it to yourself if I'm crazy for these picks. Some of these picks, let me just go ahead and write and say that after week one, uh, they're looking. some of them are looking a little iffy. They're looking like uh, they may not come true. And that's fine. It's week one. It's overreaction week. Everybody overreacts after week one, including myself. I am part of that group. It's just human nature to, if we only have one week of data, then that's all we're going to base our picks on. Or if you look really good on week one, then, hey, are you a contender? But I digress. Um, here we go. I'm going to start on the AFC first. Um, AFC West. Chiefs. Chiefs. I have the Chiefs winning the division. I have the Chiefs being the number one seed in the AFC. 
I think uh, I'm not I'm not saying anything crazy here. I'm not going on a limb. I'm I'm not stepping out on the ledge. This is um pretty straightforward. I think everybody has the Chiefs winning this division. Um, I think everybody has them at the top of the conference too, or the best team in the NFL in the regular season at least. I don't know if you have them as Super Bowl champs. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, Chiefs look really good in Week One, so um, I'm pretty confident on the pick. Um, Mahomes looked amazing. Uh, their new rookie running back looked amazing. It looks like they're gonna have a very legit running game this season, and that could be very scary for the rest of the league. Um, I don't know how you. I don't know how. If you guys tell me, how do you stop the Chiefs? If you guys were defensive, this is a question of the day. If you guys were defensive coordinators in the NFL, how would you game plan against the Chiefs? How would you stop this potent offense? Would you uh, key on Travis Kelsey? Would you stop the run now that they have a run? Would you stop uh, Tyreek Hill? Would you play one on one? Would you blitz all the time? Like, what would you do? Uh, it's it's a very tough question. I don't have the answer. I think no one in the league has the answer. So if you guys have the answer, please let me know. Um, I'm down, dumbfounded how anybody's supposed to stop the Chiefs. You're just supposed to, I guess, outscore them, which would be hard. Um, Texans couldn't do it. I don't rate the Texans that high this year, but. Let's keep going. AFC North, I have the Ravens winning. Um, I think they're clearly the second best team in the AFC. Might be the second best team in the NFL. They have the current reigning MVP in Lamar Jackson. He's looked very good. He looks like he's uh, progressing year by year. He had another year. He started the season really good in week one against the Browns. Um, so, yeah, if first two picks, I feel pretty confident. I think I'm going to hit Chiefs and Ravens. AFC South. This is uh this is where my picks start going south. In the AFC South. Which AFC South, I picked the Colts. Uh I, this might have been a little biased. If you guys don't know, I am originally from San Diego. I was a Chargers fan through and through since for over a decade, I believe. And then they left the char they left San Diego. They broke my heart and I broke up with them. So I'm a Currently a free agent fan, but I still remember the great years that Rivers brought to that franchise. So I guess I kind of made this pick with my heart just because River, Rivers went to the Colts and I, I thought he still had something in the tank. And the Colts have one of the best lines in the NFL, if not the best. Shout out to the Raiders. They might have a good one too. But that's how I made my decision. Colts. Good team, solid team. Drafted another running back. He should be good. Um, they have some weapons. Rivers was going to revive his career. Defense, they have a great uh, middle linebacker. They have some They have some talent on the defensive side too. That was my pick. I thought the Texans were going to um, regress, which I still think they will. I think the Titans are going to regress, which I still think they would. But I had the codes pretty. I had the codes rated pretty highly, and I don't know if that's gonna hold hold true anymore. Um, that's that's probably my shakiest pick that I've made or so far, or uh, maybe out of all of them. Do I still expect them to win? They could, but they lost to the Jaguars in Week One, so that's uh, that one's looking a little rough because I, I didn't rate the Jaguars that high. Minshew looked good. They might be able to do something. They got rid of. Uh, Leonard Fournette, maybe he was a real big problem. I don't know, but uh, FC South, Colts, that one might not be so hot by the time the season ends if Rivers keep throwing interceptions. Hopefully he can turn it around, make me look smart, make me look like I know what I'm talking about. If he doesn't, then he's just old. It's fine. Couldn't see that. <laughs> I picked with my heart. AFC East, I think uh correct myself here again. I start heading down the right path. I picked the Patriots. A lot of people have the Bills taking the division. Uh, now that Brady's gone, people think that the Patriots are going to, you know, release the stronghold they had on that division for many, many years. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's still their division. I think, uh, I think, sorry, I think Cam Newton is still a really good quarterback. I, I don't know why people think he's going to be washed. He's in his early 30s, I believe. He's a physical specimen. 
he could still throw the ball. He's still good. He's going to start getting his legs. He already got two rushing touchdowns. And the Patriots had a solid defense. It looked like the Patriots are going to be one of those teams that just grind you out and tough out a win week it week in and week out. And uh they have one of the best they have the best coach of all time in, in uh Belichick. So I do expect them to win. I don't think the Bills are gonna dethrone them just yet. So AFC East Patriots. But speaking of the Bills, I do think the Bills are gonna be good. They have a solid young quarterback. They added some weapons. They added uh Stefan uh, Diggs. Um they have talent on the defensive side. They just re-signed their cornerback, I believe, to a big deal. They're looking like a good team. They're looking nice. Their young quarterback, um, what's his name? Allen. Allen is good. Um, so yeah, I have the Bills getting that fifth, that fifth seed. I expect big things from them. Um, they should keep progressing. They they uh they made the playoffs last year. I I think they'll repeat this year, especially because I honestly the AFC doesn't have that many good wild card teams. Like I don't see teams in the wild card round like really making uh, that much noise. So and the Bills are a cool little team that should make the wild card and you know go out in the first round. I believe Steelers they have Big Ben back. Steelers uh they almost made the playoffs without Big Ben last year which goes to show how good of a coach Mike Tomlin is and uh, how good their defense is. So now that Big Ben's back, I expect them to still have some a little bit of thread on those tires, and uh, he should be able to be the difference between almost making the playoffs and sneaking in and making the playoffs. So I have the Steelers as a sixth seed. And if you guys don't know, there's now a seventh seed. They're at an extra alcohol spot. There's only one team that gets a bye week, so there's more games in the wild card round now. Um, I think it's cool. We'll see how it goes. But um, the seventh spot, I actually have three teams from the AFC North making it. So I have the Ravens making, winning the division, being the number two seed, possibly first. And then I have Steelers making a wild card and the Browns. Surprisingly, the Browns. I have the Browns making the playoffs for the first time in God knows how long. Um, that's another pick. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie; that may look a little sketch after week one. Uh, if you guys didn't watch the game, they the Browns played the Ravens and they got destroyed. They looked awful. Mayfield looked like he's taking another step back, which is not what Brown fans want to see, want to hear. Um, they should be used to it by now. The quarterbacks are just not good. Um, but hopefully they could change it. Hopefully it's just a, it's just a. It's just a result of playing the Ravens. The Ravens are just a really good team. Hopefully, that's all it is. The Browns played one of the best teams in the league. No harm in losing to them. Hopefully, that's it, and they're able to turn it around, and they make the playoffs. It would be nice to see the Browns in the playoffs. They, I feel bad for their fans. Not too bad, just because, like I said, I grew up in San Diego, so I know what it feels like being in a town that doesn't win nothing. And at least if you're a Browns fan, you're most likely a Cavaliers fan, and you saw a championship. So you'll be all right. But I do have the Browns making the playoffs. We'll see how that goes. Supposedly, I think today came out. Today, one more time, today is Tuesday, September 15th. Uh, today came out, the Browns are actually trying to shop OBJ, and they're trying to uh, move on from him. Is that If that's true... I still believe the Browns have enough talent to to make the playoffs, even without OBJ. Uh, obviously, OBJ will help, but if they trade him away, they still have two. And Joku got hurt, so he he's done. But they have Hooper, and then they have uh, Landry. They they still got weapons. They have a uh, Hunt. They have Chubb. They have enough weapons to uh, to make the playoffs, even if OBJ is not there. But it, it is the Browns. So anybody that picks the Browns to make the playoffs is going out on a limb, with <laughs> just because that's how they ba- that's how bad they are. That's how unlucky they are. Uh, people had them winning the Super Bowl last year, which is crazy. I think it's not too far fetched to think that they're gonna make the playoffs this year as the last seven seed. Um, the two teams I have in the mix that could potentially make the playoffs are the Raiders and the Texans. Raiders. 
I think this is year three or four of the Mike Gruden experiment. Chucky, he's a good coach. I think he'll he'll get them to the playoffs eventually. Um, the one thing that they're missing are wide receivers. They have no experience. Tyrell Williams, I think, is done for the season. I think I think they jogged out two rookies as their starters, which is not the ideal thing, especially when you're trying to see if Carr is the real deal. But they have a good line. They have an elite running back that's going to be pushing towards top five running back this year. Um, Jacobs, he had, I think he had three touchdowns on week one. Shout out to Jacobs, fantasy performer of the week, if I'm giving out awards. Uh, really uh, put the team on his back. They beat the... They beat the lowly Panthers, which I expected them to win. So, yeah, the Raiders. Raiders, I feel like the Raiders will definitely be right there to the end of the season competing for a playoff spot. They might get it, which would be fun. Uh, I mean, they'll get a wild card, so they won't, they won't have a home game. I was going to say that having a, a playoff game in Vegas would be fun, but as a wild card, you won't see that. So, forget I said that. And then the last team I have in the mix would be the Texans. And that's just because I respect uh, Watson. He's a great quarterback. He, he's probably top five quarterbacks in the league. Top ten for sure. Um, I just don't like Bill O'Brien. I think he's a terrible coach. I think he's the worst GM. I think the Texans won't win anything. or um, They won't win anything. They won't achieve anything. They, they're just stuck with him. And they have uh, good enough pieces to at least make the playoffs or be in contention. So I don't know what it's going to take to trade him, to get rid of him, to cut him, to fire him. Um, and I think they just gave them a raise and they gave him a higher title and they re-extended his contract. I don't know. I don't know. Does, does Bill O'Brien have some dirt on the Texans GM or the Texans owner? I, I don't see how he still has his job. He's... It's what I say. When you come from a good coaching tree, you always get longer chances. And Bill O'Brien comes from that Bill Belichick coaching tree. So I'm, I'm guessing the Texans just hope that they have the next, the next Bill Belichick. But I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys right here, he's not the next Bill Belichick. He might not even be the next uh, high school coach. Brand, he's terrible. He's a terrible GM. The only reason I have the Texans in the mix is because I respect Watson and his talents, and he might just be able to drag him into contention or at least keep him close to playoff spot the whole season. But, yeah, those are my predictions for the AFC. Chiefs, Ravens, Colts, Patriots, Bills, Steelers, Browns, In the Hunt, Raiders, Texans. Uh, I think the Titans are going to fall off. I don't believe in Tannehill. I think they paid him way too much. I don't know what they're thinking. Almost, I think thirty million a year, twenty nine around there. He's he's not that guy. You can't pay him that much. Titans are gonna fall off a cliff. In my opinion, they beat the they beat the Broncos yesterday. They eked out a win. Uh, I do feel like most of their games are gonna be close just because their defense is is all right. But I just don't see Tannehill being able to pull those games out. Uh, on the NFC side, NFC NFC predictions. Um, after week one, but they were decided before preseason. I just got the video out late. NFC West Seahawks. Uh, they were one yard away from winning the division last year, but they got stopped. And I think this year they'll they'll win the division. They have the second best quarterback in the league, and Russell Wilson. He's elite. He actually is my MVP uh preseason pick. I didn't tweet it out, so I don't have proof of that. But I'm going to say it right here. Uh, Russell Wilson will win MVP this year. And the Seahawks will be the NFC West champions this year. NFC North, the Packers. I have the Packers winning their division. Mm, I predicted that Rodgers was going to have a resurgence year this year. I thought that uh, drafting Love in the first round... As the Packers did, was going to light a fire under him. He's going to try to prove to the Packers that he's the quarterback for the next few years still. And he came out firing on week one. He scored four touchdowns. Packers dismantled the Vikings. They looked really good. Um, I think that that pick is pretty solid. 
NFC South, the Saints have a lot of continuity. They have a lot of players coming back. Michael Thomas, Drew Brees. They added Emmanuel Sanders. I think he scored a touchdown this week. They're going to gonna add another weapon for uh, Drew Brees. Sean Payton, another coach, sometimes gets overlooked because he's been there for a while, but he's a great coach. Saints, Saints should win the NFC South. Uh, they played the Bucks in week one, which are their toughest competition. Brady looked a little off. Brady looked like he might be done, but we'll see. We'll see. It's only week one, but I do think the, the Saints should be able to pull off uh, the division by the, by season's end. In the NFC East, I did pick the Eagles to repeat. I think last year they were hurt with a lot of injuries, but they lost to the Washington football team. In week one, so um, that pick might might not be might not be truth, might not come to fruition if uh, if I'm being one hundred if I'm keeping it one hundred. Um, you can't you can't lose to Washington if you're a Super Bowl aspiration team like the Eagles were, and they were up seventeen zero and they lost twenty seven to seventeen. It's unacceptable. You twenty seven point swing without <laughs> without throwing a punch back. Um, Wentz can't be throwing picks at times like like that like there were very there's some picks that all right they hurt but he threw some very crucial picks that like really flipped the game um so yeah how do the eagles winning the nfc east i think they should still win it they, they still have a chance just gotta shore up the line wentz has to be smarter with the football um number five buccaneers they should get the first wild card spot in my opinion after week one we'll see brady brady might brady might be too old at this point of his career like he he's a good quarterback he's the goat there's no denying it even even myself being uh i always preferred um peyton manning over him growing up but he just kept playing way longer than manning and he won way more chips so he is the goat but he might be done, and there's no, there's no shame in saying that. He had a great career, but he looked like he struggled against the Saints. So we'll see if uh, if that continues or if that was just a week one thing. But I had the Buccaneers at five, Cowboys at six. Cowboys lost to the Rams on Sunday Night Football. Dak Prescott looked like he always does. He makes some good, he makes some good plays with his legs. He makes decent throws with his arms. He misses some throws. He doesn't lead some wide receivers sometimes. He leaves yards on the field just because it's a completion, but it's a hard completion, so the, the wide receiver is not able to run after the catch. I think that's vintage Dak Prescott, you know, playing good enough to, like, you can't really, like, hate on him too much, but he doesn't play good enough where you get overly excited on how he plays. So I had the Cowboys at number six, and that's mostly because they're, they're very talented. Their offense has so many weapons. They're spending a lot of money on stars. Defense has a lot of good players, too. And if they, I, I just have them as the sixth seed, as the seventh. The last wild card spot, I have the Niners making it. Um, This was mostly just because I love their head coach. Shanahan, I think, is... The best young offensive mind in the league. He's like a he's like a younger Andy Reid. He's a great offensive mind. I think he's just waiting for his Mahomes. Um, I think Garoppolo is holding him back. I don't, I don't rate Garoppolo at all. I think he's a horrible quarterback. For what what he gets paid, it's a bad deal. How much he's getting paid and the production that he brings to that team. He almost got Kittle killed yesterday. Your their best player, the the, the player that makes their offense go. Uh, he was, I think he, he was limited after after that after the injury against the Cardinals, and then that killed their tempo. And I, if there was one person to blame for that injury, is Garoppolo. Um, if you guys didn't see the play, it was a simple throw to the side to the to the flat. I think they were setting up a screen for uh, Kittle to catch the ball quickly and and get blocked in front of him, and start running. And what's his name? Garoppolo with his inaccurate arm that he has um you know throws it quickly like he's supposed to but instead of throwing it 
somewhere where Kittle could catch it and run. He throws it high. Kittle goes up to get it, exposes himself, and then he sh- like that should never be the the case on a simple throw like that. He exposes Kittle. Kittle, being the good receiver that he is, goes and gets this overthrown pass, exposes his 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 torso, exposes his legs, gets really high. Player comes down low and you know hits him on the knee, and then after that he's hobbled. He had to walk out. I think he even went back to the locker room, and then he tried to play after that. But let me just tell you, that, that injury is on Garoppolo. There's no other way to put it. He's exposing his wide receivers. He's putting them in tough positions. I know that they're warriors. They're not. If the pass is high, they're not just going to let it sail over their heads. They're going to try to go and get it. And it cost them this time. Hopefully, Kittle is able to come back 100% and he plays the rest of the season good. But uh, that's part of what you get with Garoppolo. He's not a good quarterback. He really isn't. I feel sorry for Niner fans. This is one of the best rosters you guys have had. In a long time, you have a really good head coach. But your quarterback is limited. And then I think uh, one of the plays that really resonated with me was the series. Um, I think the last series before uh, the last touchdown that they scored. Granted, the, the, the drive ended on a touchdown because Shanahan is such a good head coach that even if you miss one, he'll be able to draw up another one and get you that touchdown because he's such a good head coach. But sometimes that won't be enough. The one chance you get, you're going to have to complete it or else uh, the team, the other team won't give you that chance, you, no matter how good your coach is. And uh, they were in the red zone, and Garoppolo, I think Mostar was running a wheel route, and right as he's getting to the top end of his wheel route, like the defender is just covering the flat. I think there was a receiver there, and Mostar just sneaks by. He's wide open. He's raising his hand. Garoppolo doesn't see him. He tries to force a throw and incomplete pass, I believe. Mostar was wide open for a touchdown. Completely wide open on the left side of Garoppolo. Misses him. I was a I'm a neutral fan. I have Mostar in one of my fantasy leagues, so I was kind of upset. I was like, come on, man. He's a wide open. Like, how did you not see him? Fortunately for Nine fans, Shanahan draws up a good play and they get a touchdown, I think, on the very next play. And Garoppolo looks good. But against elite teams, elite teams in this league, they're going to give you one chance. And if you don't take it, you're screwed. It could be the end. It could be the deciding factor in if you win or if you lose. And I just I don't believe in Garoppolo. He stresses me out. He doesn't instill confidence, in my opinion, if you're a player on that team. He's not someone that you, you're you overly confident in. And uh, I might cost him. That's another pick. I have him. Sneaking into the playoffs as the seventh seed, the last wild card spot, but I could definitely see them missing, missing, uh, missing the playoffs altogether, just because I don't believe in Garoppolo and I think I think they should move on from him. And then the two teams I have in the mix, I would have the Vikings and the Cardinals. I think the Vikings, uh, they had a, a small window where they could make some noise. I think that window's closing, uh, and uh, NFC teams are starting. There's a lot of good NFC teams, so. Vikings had their time in the sun. Now there's other teams that are coming up. Like it's like you got to put the Buccaneers in there just because they have a lot of talent. I think the Cowboys should bounce back, so they're gonna take up another another playoff spot. And even the Cardinals, that's my last team to be in the mix. They look like they're gonna make some noise. They beat the Niners. Um, Murray looked good. DeAndre Hopkins had the most catches he's ever had in a career in a in a game. So it looked like they made a good trade. They Cardinals could probably sneak into the playoffs and make uh make make a team uh, nervous in the first round. But yes, those are my predictions. Uh, I just wanted to talk about some games real quick over the weekend. Um, there was a there was two games that really stood out, or a couple games that stood out. Um, one of them was the Eagles. <laughs> uh, I kind of had the Eagles going for this year. They were gonna make the playoffs as. A, East champions, and I thought they would make it at least to the. They could make it to the championship. I I, I didn't play out the finals, but just looking at the teams, I did think the Eagles could uh could make some noise this year. Just because I rate Carson Wentz pretty high, but to blow a 17-0 lead to the Washington football team and lose 27-17, just not scoring points in the second half, and the team looked lost. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know how I feel about that team. Um, that pick is making me a little nervous. Um, Washington, with all the all the bad press they got this year, uh, potentially going to be one of the worst teams ever. And uh, they they start one to know a lot of scandals that they had over the off season. To start one to know is a uh, real good for them. Um, shout out to Rivera; he's a great head coach. Um, I think he has cancer now. Hopefully. He powers through that, and he's able to have a healthy, healthy life. But he's a great head coach. I'm pretty sure he pumped them up, and that's the reason that they they were able to beat the the Eagles. So that's a game that stood out for me. Uh, another one that stood out for me was uh, how good Aaron Rodgers looked against the Vikings. The Vikings usually uh, are at least pretty good at containing Rodgers, or at least making it difficult for him. And he just had their way his way against them yesterday. Um, it looks like he's back. It looks like he's back. Um, it looks like he's back to his, uh, MVP form. I wouldn't say prime, but he looked really good. He looked mobile. Um, he, he looked like, uh, he had his legs under him. He was moving around the pocket and outside the pocket really good. I, like I said, I have the Packers winning the North mostly because I believe in Aaron Rodgers and he showed up week one. I'm very excited to see if he's able to keep it up. Um, if he is the Packers, Packers, if if this Aaron Rodgers shows up against the Niners last playoffs, they would have had a chance, but he didn't. But this Aaron Rodgers puts the Packers up there against anybody. If Aaron Rodgers is playing this good, Packers have a chance against anybody, especially if like they have a good running back. They have a number one wide receiver, Devontae Adams. That's amazing. If Rodgers is hitting on all cylinders, it's, they're going to be a tough out for anybody. Uh, the last one that really stood out to me was the Buccaneers versus the Saints. Buccaneers have all this hype coming into the season. They have so many players that have a lot of talent. They added Leonard, uh, Fournette. Uh, they added Gronkowski. They added Brady. A lot of people have them making the Super Bowl, winning their division, going deep into the playoffs. I have them making the, the playoffs. I don't see them going that deep, but they are going to make the playoffs. And Brady looked a little shaky. I'm not going to lie. Brady looked a little old. He made a little small comeback at the end, but not really. Was, the game was never, like, in doubt. It looked like the Saints had it for a while. Uh, Hey, if this is it, if this is it for Brady, if, if he's really done, he had a great of a career, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame career, two two times Hall of Fame. Like, I know some people have said that his first half of his career and his second half career, they could have both made the Hall of Fame, kind of, like, reminds me of Kobe's career. Um, which is true. And if this is the end, then thank you for the great ride, Tom Brady. Uh, I enjoyed rooting against you for all these years. Don't like the Patriots. Was always rooting against you. I preferred Manning over you. I thought Manning was a better quarterback. But, hey, you were a great villain for so many years. If, if, if your days as being a villain are over, hey, cheers. Cheers to all those years that you were a great villain for a lot of teams. I know a lot of teams didn't like you. Mostly because you always eliminated our teams in the playoffs. But if if that's if this is it for Brady, which it kind of kind of kind of looks like he, he's gonna finally fall off a cliff, his age is finally gonna catch up to him. Then man, it was a hell of a ride. Shout out to Brady. I know you left it all on the field. If it's not, if you come back from this and you just have a great season, then it just keeps adding to your to your legend. And uh, we're lucky to have experience. Having to, we're lucky to be able to watch you play, and uh, I hope, I hope he does decent. I hope the Buccaneers make the playoffs, and uh, I hope Brady gets uh, another run at, at a chip. Just because it's always it's always fun to root against Brady in the playoffs. So yeah, those were my picks. Uh, those were my thoughts on Week One. I think uh, most of my picks are pretty sound. Um, the Colts, the Colts is another one that kind of scares me just because of Rivers, freaking Rivers. Um, but, yeah, other than that, uh, Joe Burrow looked good in some parts of the game. Some other parts he had some, like, the, the interception was terrible. <laughs> the, I was joking with my friends watching the game, like, who's going to choke the game first? Like, is it going to be the Bengals or the Chargers? It was like the choke fest. Like, who's who's going to win the, uh, the award for your franchise that chokes away the most victories? I low key put my money on the Chargers just because they're known for that. But uh, 
the Bengals kicker missed and, and they took the award. But yeah, uh, this was the NFL topic for today. Uh, I'll, on my next episode, depending on when it comes out, I'll either uh, make my picks for week two or I'll recap week two, which should be another great week of football. I'm so glad football's back. Um, fantasy football's back, which is great to keep up with the homies, especially during times like this where, where we're going through COVID and we're, we can't really interact with that many people. Um, just having a a platform that lets you that makes you communicate with your friends is, is fun it's it's uh keeps you entertained keeps keeps you in touch with a lot of people um i am the champion for my league back home so i just wanted to put that out there um get to talk shit to all my friends back home so yeah super excited for the nfl season i think it's gonna be a great season hopefully at some point uh, we're able to have fans back in the stadiums um i don't have a uh i don't have a team that i root for right now just because I am a free agent fan. Um, when the Chargers left San Diego, uh, I left their fan base. I was not going to support them once I went to L.A. Even though I do support some L.A. teams, it was just the principle. Like, I didn't like how they left San Diego, so I stopped being a fan. Which some people might take the wrong way. They say they'll follow their team wherever, but I just don't like the owner, and I can't support a team with that owner. But... That being the case, uh, I think some uh, being a free agent fan has its pros and its cons just because uh, I don't get heartbroken when a team loses. Like if the Chargers lost, <laughs> I wouldn't, it would have been funny to me or I wouldn't have been hurt. But then it has its negatives just because I don't get the same satisfaction of seeing teams like your team win. There's, there's definitely a different feel when you're rooting for a team and and that team wins like you like you you're part of something kind of which is what sports sports is uh, are all about making you feel like you're part of something bigger so yeah if you guys have a team for me um let me know down in the comments what team I should join if I should join any team or uh, make a pitch make a pitch on why I should join your team i know my my friend andrew was uh, telling me to join the raiders bandwagon which would be pretty crazy coming from an ex charger fan but i mean i'm open to anything if any teams have any openings i am a free agent fan i am a lo- i am eh, i can't say i'm loyal because i got rid of the Chargers. but when i'm there i'm there i'll be loud and proud and i'll defend the team till till the end and if no team comes along for me then i'm i'm pretty pretty chilling being a, a free agent fan it's not the end of the world but uh, that ends my uh NFL topic for the day. Very excited for the NFL. Week one was great. I think week two. I think the I think the the games are just gonna get better since there was no preseason. Camp started late. Um, person to person like interactions between the teams started real late. So I think a lot of teams were rusty. That that might be the reason why some games weren't as exciting. But I think as the season progresses, once that first month is over, I believe by when October comes, we're gonna have teams like really getting into gear and we're gonna have it's just gonna be an amazing season 